Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Wilds of Eldraine draft here on the channel. We're going to be going pick by pick, play by play, talking through everything so you know what to do when you draft this format yourself. But before I dive in, I want to give a huge shout out to Wizards of the Coast for giving me a free preview account in the early access event so I could get this recorded for you early. If you're interested in more of an overview style video where I go through top commons, archetype overviews, and things like that, you can find my draft guide already posted on my channel. Okay, so uh, our rare is a very interesting one because if we can get some artifacts and uh, other tokens in play, we can sacrifice them to return a bunch of creatures into play at once from our graveyard, which is pretty cool because if you can stock your graveyard with stuff, then that's like a really powerful thing to do for five mana, but it does require a lot of setup. So it's something like maybe not like as strong as just like getting back a couple of cards. If this was like bring back two creatures, it'd be probably better. Um, there is also back for seconds, which is probably a better version of this because you don't need to bring things back to play. You can just get them back to hand. And so I think this is probably a better version of that effect. Get back two creatures and you can sometimes bring one back to play if you sacrifice a token, which seems much better. Uh, Dark Tutelage is uh, like a very slow card. I don't really want to take that early. I do think that Lord Skitter's Butcher is quite strong. And so I think I'm going to take that. The commons aren't too impressive. I like this one. I like this one. Um, but I think I'm going to take Lord Skitter's Butcher just because it has a lot going on. And then other than that, back for seconds is pretty good. But I haven't gotten to try this one yet, and so I'm happy to get that experimentation. Okay, it's really powerful to start your draft with cards of the same color, because then you can like lean into that color and then pivot away from it, uh, even if that color is not the most open. And so taking a back for seconds here could be quite good. Uh, it actually has some synergy with Lord Skitter's Butcher because this can make a rat token and then you can use the rat token to uh, bargain this card if you want. Not the craziest synergy, but it is something you can do. Uh, and so I think back for seconds is a reasonable pick. There's also Belligerent of the Ball, which is a very nice aggressive card. And Lord Skitter's Butcher plays well with that because Lord Skitter can come in to play with a token, trigger celebration, which is if there are two or more non the permanents entering play. In the commons... I think uh, Hollow Scavenger is pretty nice, but you don't need to take it that early. Cooped Up is a good removal spell. And uh, I think Tempest Heart is also pretty decent. Just decent size creature can grow. I think I'm gonna take back for seconds though to stay with black. I think it's just a nice little recursive effect that can actually not put it behind, behind, behind on tempo sometimes, which is pretty good for that sort of effect. <laughs> it's gonna be hard for me not to take this card every time I see it. It's really good, and it's also really adorable. So basically, you can deal one to something, which can sometimes pick off a creature, and then you can just get a 3-mana 2-2 flyer that has basically pseudo-prowess. There's also Archive Dragon as a top-end card. The only black cards in the pack aren't insane. Rat Out is, like, medium, and Warehouse Tabby is kind of hard to set up, but can do some stuff. Um, the other commons, Ratcatcher Trainee is okay. Obire's Attendance is fine. But I think Frolicking Familiar actually might just be the best card in the pack. Even though I've taken a couple black cards, I'm willing to move off of it. And we're seeing a few blue cards. I think Archive Dragon is nice, but because it costs six mana, you'd rather often play like something like Obira's Attendance because it actually has utility in the early game versus a card that's pure late game. Which it is pretty good though. Six mana, four, six flyer with Ward and Scrying is just a huge body. But we're going to take the Frolicking Familiar. It doesn't play with our early picks, but that's okay. And now we see a Johan's Stopgap, also Tenacious Tome Seeker, pretty good uh, in the potential like deck that a Frolicking Familiar might be good in, Instance and Sorceries Matter. Uh, Merry Bards can do some work, making a Roll Token. The green cards aren't particularly great, the white cards aren't particularly great. The only good white cards we've seen are the two mana Pacifism variant. Food Fight's interesting, really good with food tokens. Oppression. Not a great card, because it's symmetrical, so it matters when you cast them too. Here, I think it's between Johan's Stopgap and Tenacious Tome Seeker. I think I want to try taking the Tenacious Tome Seeker, seeing if building around that can work. I think Johan's Stopgap is a really good second option out of this pack, though. And I'm feeling pretty good about blue. Tenacious Tome Seeker, also a good combo with back for seconds. And Hatching Plans is kind of an interesting one. It only works with Bargain, but if you play this early, you can just draw three cards when you bargain it. We have Tenacious Tome Seeker as a synergy piece. We have Back for Seconds. I kind of want to take this. We've been taking some blue cards. There's also a Rat Catcher Trainee, which is good. This card's okay, but I think I'm going to try Hatching Plans, see if it's worth building around. 
in these early drafts because this thing can actually do some serious work two mana to draw three cards is no joke and it also like synergizes great with tome seeker back for seconds we could build like a blue black control deck um that maybe splashed red or something like that we don't need to be able to cast the frolicking familiar um but yeah black isn't looking that open after our first two picks anyway but i want to try hatching plans we'll see how it does and now there's a johan's stopgap once we have hatching plans, any cards with bargain go up in value because then we can enable this. And Johan's stopgap is perfect. We aren't seeing too much red. We're seeing a little bit of green, a little bit of white here. Hopeful Vigil's good. Once again, plays really well with a card like Yo with uh, that has bargain because you can make the two two and then sacrifice the Hopeful Vigil. So we'll keep our eyes out for white cards. But we have blue being open and then kind of figuring it out from there. I like Ice Rot Sentry a lot. It kind of fuels itself. You don't need other tappers to make this good. Three mana, two, three vigilance, already okay. Then you can tap your opponent's creatures and attack as a four, four, which is just really nice. Puts a lot of pressure on your opponent if you are aggressive. Quick study's decent. Mocking sprite's okay. Sleight of hand is pretty cute. Um, and so blue is looking very open. And so that's the color we're going to lean towards. Instance play well with this. Instance play well with frolicking familiar. But we're going to just get more creatures, I think, for now. This is just a really solid one, I think. Also, Solitary Sanctuary plays well in a blue-white tapping deck. But I think the Sentry is just more independently solid. I think we're going to keep trying the Tenacious Tome Seekers over the Johan's Stop Gaps. Um, there's also a Misleading Moats. We're seeing lots of blue, so blue is looking open. But we're going to just be trying to, like... Maybe we don't want the Ice Rot Sentries as much. Maybe we'd rather have, like, Sleight of Hands to get back with our Tome Seekers. But I think Tome Seeker is just a really strong card. Plays well with hatching plans, and I think Johan's stopgap is also pretty decent, but we're just going to keep taking the uh, Tome Seekers. Baluna's Gatekeeper, a bounce effect. There's also Collector's Vault, which honestly I kind of want to try, because it makes treasures which we can sacrifice to Donatius Tome, Keep Tome Seekers and other bargain cards, and also just loots us through our deck. I think Baluna's Gatekeeper is okay, maybe. It's a big top-end guy that can also bounce things. I'd rather use this as bounce, though. Water Wings is not my favorite. But yeah, we're going to try the Collector's Vault. Now we'll get a two drop. We see some white cards, black card, red card. But we'll just get a two drop to build out our curve. Oh, Buyer's Attendance is a nice follow up because it's a five drop to go with the Storm Keld Prowler. We are wide open in this blue lane, and now we'll take a Merry Bards. In case we want to go into a blue-red specifically, we get a Mocking Sprite. Could be good in our deck. We have a lot of instants and sorceries at the moment. And a last pick, Bespoke Battle Garb. Not that surprising. One of the cool things about Collector's Vault is because it makes a treasure, it's like essentially only costs one mana to use because you pay two and then you immediately get a mana back. Just good to be aware of. So our curve is okay. We're probably not playing black based on the way that pack went because we started with two black cards and then didn't even come close to taking a black card. Here, I really like Cut In. One thing that you really want to have when you have a card like Tenacious Tome Seeker is a great removal spell that you can get, and Cut In even gives a roll token, which means that we'll be able to get back the guy later as well. Like, we can um, sacrifice that card to bargain something. Ember of the Veteran's also pretty solid as a one-drop. There's not a crazy blue card like Mocking Sprite's Medium. Edgewall Innkeeper... I mean, Edgewall Inn is okay, but we don't really have tons of adventure cards. We have, like, one... So I'm pretty happy getting a four mana removal spell here. We have a couple of adventure guys, but Hudden's great for our deck. If we're going to pair blue with anything. Ooh, I love Twirling Twins. This card's fantastic. Even if you aren't playing anything but blue, four mana, four, four, Flying Vigilance, Ward one is just absurd. And because of our Collector's Vault, we're going to have access to some white mana. We could also just straight up play blue white still. We only have a couple of red cards. So yeah, this is a really good sign that we're getting past this because it means blue is wide open from this direction. We're going to get every good blue card this pack. And we can flicker stuff, so we have some enter the battlefield effects like this that we can copy if we can get into blue-white, so that's pretty cool. And now there is a Aquatic Alchemist. This is a card I'm pretty happy to take. Uh, the cool thing about this is there's a lot more instants and sorceries running around to trigger the plus two plus O part of the card because like Obira's attendance is a creature, but if I want to buff this guy with plus two plus O, I'll have an extra instant. I can't actually put Obira's attendance back on top of my deck with the aquatic alchemist adventure, but the one three can be a three, three slightly more often. 
This card's also decent if I have a lot of instants and sorceries, which I think I do at this time. I've got three sorceries, no instants, eh? Well, we'll we'll fix that maybe later. This card's also pretty nice, giving double strike and a nice sizable creature, but we're going to take the alchemist. Stick to blue, because we don't know our second color quite yet. Leyland of the Void, no. Ashiok's Reaper, not really a card I can use. There is a Stormkeld Prowler. There's also a Kellen's Light Blades. I think I want to play red, because I do have, like, the Frolicking Familiar. And I got cut in. Battle Garb's not a card I'm playing. But I don't really have a huge reason to play red. I don't really just want to take a random blue card. I could take Scarecrow Guide. Could also just take a Tapper. Could also just take a Two Drop. I don't really have a lot of expensive. I think I'm going to take the Light Blades, though. Not the best card to get back, because they know you'll have it if you do get it back. But I don't really care about getting a random 2-1 that doesn't even synergize with my deck particularly well. Okie doke. And now there is another Tome Seeker. We're just going to keep taking all of the Tome Seekers and see how it turns out. If we're going to keep getting these cards, we're going to see if we can build around it. Build a lot of instants and sorceries. We don't have that many at the moment, but we have a pack and a half. Blue's wide open. We'll get more blue cards. And we'll just have to find some expendable artifacts and stuff to sacrifice, like prophetic prisms and stuff like that. Another Aquatic Alchemist. This draft is going pretty well, I would say. I also let cut in with Aquatic Alchemist. Another Hatching Plans. Perfect. More Synergy. Diminisher Witch. Bitter Chills. Fantastic. You can pay one. If you do Scry one, then draw a card. Pretty cool. You can, like, even... Yeah. I think we're just going to take another Hatching Plans, though. We have a lot of cool synergies with that. Cast an Adventure. You can copy it. So that means that we can copy... Our Obira's Attendance, our Twinning Things, if we do go that direction, our Otter. We don't really have a ton of synergy with this. I think it's better than that guy, though. Better than this counter. I don't really like the counters. I think it's between that and Obira's Attendance. Honestly, Obira's might have been better. This is a higher upside pick, though, because we could still get some really strong adventures. We're still choosing between white and... Blue is a secondary color. We wield the only blue card from that pack. That's a good sign. We're not going to play black. Black was so not open this draft. Blue is open, though. That's all that matters. We're going to take misleading moats. We just want more instance sorceries. I don't think we're going to play ice rot sentries. It's more of an aggressive card because it attacks better. And we have plenty of three drops that are more defensive. More our speed here. Perfect, we get a two drop. You can bargain this. You can sack it to create a sorcerer roll on one of our your flyers. Also just blocks. Can we wield the only blue card from this pack? So yeah, we are almost mono blue at this point, but there's no reason not to try and pair it with a second color, get some extra bonus stuff. I think Collector's Vault could actually be pretty decent in this deck. I don't really like this card. It just doesn't kill stuff permanently. I'd probably rather have it than a Coral Smith, though. Three turns is not necessarily that long. It taps it. It's better in an aggressive deck, I'll say. But I have infinite three drops, so I don't really need more. Might not even play the Mocking Sprites. It's going to depend on what I open, whether I play red or not. This is a red card, but it's not too impressive. It's more like you hit them a couple times, replace your hand, and I'm not really that sort of deck. There is another cut in, however, and I think that's going to solidify me into red. As I was saying, with Tenacious Tome Stalker, you just really, Tome Seeker, you just really want good, powerful kill spells to get back. There is a Candy Grapple, but Black was so unopened that I don't really want to risk it. I'm just going to take cut in. And uh, hope that there's some red cards to get passed around here. We're going to get every blue card this pack. and just, We have two cut-ins to like constantly buy back. It's just good synergy. Cut-in plus Tome Seeker is a really good combo. And we get past a red rare, so that's a good sign as well. We did get past a Candy Grapple, which is maybe a sign that red was more open than I thought. 
Charming Scoundrel is just great, though. You play this as a two-drop. Uh, get either a treasure to ramp you into something or to bargain later, or you just put a Wicked Roller token attached to him. Uh, so it's like a two-mana two-two in that sense, or you can discard a card to draw a card, but it just does a lot of different things. There's also another Collector's Vault, which it will probably wheel, and maybe we can do something cool with that. Garrick's Uprising, not something I can use. We're probably going to wheel the Alchemist. I don't think anyone else is playing blue. I think the Scoundrel's probably better, though. We don't really have that heavy of a red count, but I'd be happy if that or the Vault wheeled, because I want to try the Vault, as I said. Perfect. We get Johan's Stopgap. Another great card. We have so much synergy with this Hatching Plans. We're going to be drawing so many cards. We should make sure we can win once we've drawn all the cards. I'll take the Stopgap. Going to cut the black cards. Going to cut the white card. We have this collector's vault that can get us the treasure to do some stuff with the misleading, no, with the uh, twining twins. The twining twins. This guy's here. There's a crystal grotto. A sprite. Diminisher, which is honestly just reasonable removal that also works with hatching plans. I think. I think turning something into a one one is totally fine. This card plays really well with young hero rolls, so cut in plays great with the sprite. But we might not use that anyway. I might play a Crystal Grotto in this deck. I probably wouldn't, though. Hmm. Vault making treasures so that we can bargain constantly seems good. I also don't know if we want to play this Chancellor. We do want to play the Pickleback, Picklelock Prankster. Picklelock Prankster is great in our deck because we have instant sorceries and fairies. And it's a two drop that blocks well. There's an Evolving Wilds, but we're not going that direction. Curiosity is fine in some decks, but we're not really that direction either. And we're really happy to get that. I think it mills four cards, yeah. So we don't really want Chancellor of Tales for that one either. We're going to keep it in for now. I don't think we want Storm, Storm Prowler when it only works off of one of our cards. Whoa! So we basically turn all of our opponent's creatures into 1-1s. One that's what this does. I want to try it. I feel like that's good. It seems like a good effect to me. I turn all of their stuff into 1-1s one and then let the cards fall as they may. This card's also pretty solid, but I really want to try this out. And we can even buy it back. I mean, this is a perfect opportunity to try it out. I wouldn't mind the stopgap. Curiosity's back. Perfect. We got to torch the tower. Another great removal spell to go with all of our, all of our uh, guys that buy stuff back. I don't think we want the mocking sprites, honestly. Because our curve is pretty low as it is. How many creatures do we have? 16, yeah. We want to maximize our instants and sorceries, I think. We don't need the Chancellor of Tales. Misleading Motes, honestly, might not be good enough. Perfect, another Johans. Chancellor's not really what our deck is trying to do. Perfect, I like the Johans, though. Hopefully we get back that Collector's Vault. I want to try that out. Three, four, we have pretty good two drops, I think. This is a counter spell. I'm not really interested, but I'll take it. The problem with counter spells is if you if the thing gets put into play, you have no options. <laughs> Hatching plans is gonna be great in this deck, though. We have a lot of ways to bargain. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We're always gonna be drawing three cards off that bad boy. Perfect. We wield the aquatic alchemist. This is perfect. In the mid-game, we're going to basically, with collector's vault, be able to like stack our deck. And loot, loot away our cards if we can get the Collector's Vault into play. I think two Collector's Vaults would have been too many. Even though you can technically loot away one to the second one. Um, Sure, I'll take... Yeah, I'll just take the Lectern. I don't think I want it, though. There's a one drop, but we can't t sacrifice it to do anything useful. Um, Picklock Prankster and three Alchemists. Curiosity. 
Sure, we don't want another lectern. We're not even playing the ones we have. Ooh, slide of hand. I'll take that. Slide of hand's actually pretty good in it. So now it's just about a matter of finding a nice balance of cards that give me stuff to bargain with to the actual bargain payoffs. And we don't actually have that many things that work with bargain. Our young hero role. This is really good with our bargaining. That's good with bargaining. Um, so that's three, four, five. We can sacrifice, and we have five cards that work with bargain, and then a bunch of bargain cards. We'll see how it works out. This is a pretty good combo, though, because you can bargain, sacrifice something, get cut in, cut in, sacrifice the young hero token on that again. Okay, so we have a couple of cuts to make. I could see us cutting Obira's Attendance. It's a big flyer, but we don't really need that, I don't think. And we have seven sorceries, two instants. We could cut Diminisher Witch. We have a lot of three drops. And we have good removal, so I think we're going to cut that. We also don't have that many bargain enablers. Misleading Moats, I think, is good as an answer to stuff. I think we might cut a Mountain. Though I don't... Hmm. I have really good ways to spend my mana and lots of card draw. So I like the sleight of hand, I think. Just ups my options on stuff, helps me trigger my alchemists when I need to. Instant speed spells are also good for triggering alchemists, so I think Obira's Attendance really wants to stay. I think I'm going to cut sleight of hand. I'm never going to want to get it back with Tome Seeker. I kind of like the idea of curving sleight of hand into hatching plans into Tome Seeker, though. But that's more of a late game thing anyway. Um, hmm. We're definitely going to try the antics. Three of those guys is pretty good. We're going to be able to do some cool stuff with this deck. Yeah. I think we're going to run it like this for now. And we can always make changes later. Anyway. I'm excited to see how it does, and I'll see you folks in the games. Once again, thanks to Wizards for the free preview account so we can play these matches. I'm going to play five matches to maximize my efficiency in this event in terms of trying new decks and stuff. So let's see if we can get a winning record. Before I get to the games, I want to give a brief shout out to the Nikolai Volos Patreon. If you've been enjoying my videos and would like to support my content directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. Patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Patreon is a way for viewers to give back to the content that they enjoy. So if my videos have made your life a little bit brighter, maybe if you want some extra booster packs or gems on Magic Arena and you just enjoy the channel, then Patreon is a way for you to give back and help me continue making high quality content on a consistent basis. You'll also gain access to things like my Wilds of Eldrain tier list, where I grade every single card in the set on an A through F scale, and other things like drafts with me, or even being featured in these credits, because I do want to give a special shout out to the patrons who support at the credits level. It really does mean a lot and helps the channel grow and thrive. Thank you so much to all of my patrons, and without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to round number one. Easy keep. We've got turn to Alchemist into eventual hatching plans and Johan stopgap to refill our hand. Attendance is great with the Alchemist. Basically gives us a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, opponent, you have no idea what's coming, do you? The Alchemist is here! This card's excellent, I think. Just gives you stuff to do on turn two. It's like a two mana three three in the right deck. They might kill it. Candy grapple, yep. If they want to fight us on a one for one card advantage angle, we are going to be happy to oblige them. Hatching plans is sweet. Yep. We will mill four cards. We will not hit an instant or a sorcery. That's okay. Sad day. Goodbye, Collector's Vault. 
Felt like a reasonable way to spend the turn trying to get a little bit of card advantage. And then if they play something big, we can just bounce it or kill it. There's a lot of ways to give minus one, minus one. I don't really see the need to block here when this guy's going to do good work for us. Oh, that's perfect. Here, I think we're going to Johan stopgap bounce the Reaper. The reason for that is that the likely outcome of this is that they just... Um, replay it on their next turn and this gives us a good chance to like maybe develop another three drop oh perfect another hatching plans and it is just a very easy simple thing and then we can cut it cut in it next turn because i imagine they'll just want to replay this I think they might have minus one, minus one. If they have plus two, plus two, it's a little bit awkward for us. Okay, but now we have that, so it'll be fine. Okay, so they don't have anything worthwhile there. And now they can't attack into us because we have a two, four. So if they attack now, it means they have something. They don't have plus two, plus two. I was a little bit worried about that until I drew this. I still probably would have gone for the play, though. But now I have a free block here. Because, like, I think they have minus one, minus one. Which is weird, because it would have tapped them differently, I think. Okay. If they don't exile that, we will have our Johans to do good work. And here I am going to give this thing minus 4, minus 0, save myself 2 life, because I'm overwhelmingly likely to cast the 3, 4 next turn. And I do want to play my lands, because I have this hatching plans, which when I do sacrifice it, is going to draw me a lot of cards. Okay. Wow, they're bouncing their visitor. Okay. I thought they were going to bounce their cooped up for a second. I was like, oh, they're going to use it on my attendance. But no. This thing sitting in play with a young hero token on it gives me something to sack after my hatching plans. Alchemist. What do I want to get back? Probably Johan's stopgap. That seems good. But for now, I'm just going to play this. I think resetting my draw so that I can make sure I get rid of this hatching plans is good, but I think getting the 3-4 into play now is just much better. I suspect they have minus one, minus one. They have five cards. They were making attacks of a 2-2 two, two into a 1-3. It was also technically a free attack. Okay. I am going to be a little bit worried about the wicked things adding up with that guy. Okay, big draw, we whiffed, sad day. Take the stopgap. Play the one three. Honestly, just play the two two as well. And then not attack. We're going to have infinite cards. We just need to try and stabilize as much as we can in the life total department. We're about to draw like four cards next turn. This way, if they do kill our Obira's attendants, we at least have a double block. 
or a single block on the Vicked Visitor to make sure we don't just take infinite damage. <sighs> okay, they destroy the Otter. Sure. This is a pretty clear double block. If they do have minus one, minus one, we will still be in fine shape. So they have a kill spell or something? Candy grapple, okay. That's actually okay for us. If that's what they have, that that's what they have, but... Bounce that guy, sacking hatching plans. This will give us a lot to do. Oh, ho, 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 baby. Oh my gosh. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Play our land, play our... Hmm. Four, four. They are 3-2. We're going to have plenty of young hero rolls rolling around. This is going to be hard for them to kill, maybe. I'm going to misleading moats my own twining twins, I think. Hmm. I make the Merry Bards into a young hero. And then I'm going to put this on top of my deck. I actually could just take two for a while here. Yeah, I think I'm just going to keep taking two. Put that on top of their deck. Kill that. They replay it. Yeah. Don't want that. So if I if they put this back on top of their deck, then they're going to have next turn six mana. And so they'll just spend their turn replaying that. So I'll go down to six. I'll hit them for seven. The next turn they'll have to chump this. I'll go down to four. So this should be good enough. I can outrace the stab wound. So they kind of have to put this on the bottom. They put it on the top. I lose two. I draw. That was a sick rip. So we play this. Give it a wicked token. Attack. And then they are basically dead because they can only they can play two spells this turn, but then they die to the Twining Twins. Oh, <sighs> Stab Wound's an interesting card. Good game. I think 
they had to put it on the bottom and look for like a more permanent answer. Twining twins, like they, they, yeah, that was going to be tough. I might be able to get away with playing sleight of hand instead of an island in this, in this deck. I have a lot of cool stuff to do, but I don't really want to risk it. I'm just trying to figure out which card plays out badly, and then I'll replace that one with Flight of Hand. I think 17 lands is still good, because I have a lot to do with my mana. I mean, Twining Twins is obviously absurd. That was pretty dang good. Oh, instant Q. Let's go. Ooh, Talia Vess. She's nice. Okie doke. Well, this is a good hand. We've got the Alchemist on turn two. Hopefully we'll draw something to do on turn three. We've got a couple great four drops on the draw, so we've got time to find our stuff. Hello. This is a battle. Here we go. Land. Maybe not the ideal draw, but it'll be useful later. We do want to hit our land drops in this deck. Ah, uh, Toadstool Admirer. Perfect, another island, just what we needed. You can never have too many islands in this world. Toadstool Admirer, funnily enough, I can't really target. No! Natural Tron! This is a cool island. I haven't seen this art. It's very realistic, like something out of National Geographic. We are ready. Oh, no! This card seems pretty good. Whenever it kills something. Another island, just what the doctor ordered. I mean, not an island, it was a mountain. We're switching it up. We are switching it up. Oh, if they put a counter, that would be... I can't kill it. It's got ward. Oh, that's perfect. That's just what we needed. Honestly, that's all. perfect. Gives us something to do. Make a treasure. Island, I do not fear thee. <laughs> I may draw islands now. They put... They didn't... No! You have this guy! You can put a counter! Why didn't you put the counter on the toadstool? It was an end of turn! It was free! No! <laughs> Gosh. I can afford to pay the ward cost on this bad boy now. Oh, baby, I get to kill Goose Mother? My gosh. Sign me up for that one, please. Holy heck. <laughs> this is funny, because I can do that for the tw twenty thing, but... Yeah, we're just gonna cut in here. I kind of want to keep this treasure around. I don't really want to... Oh my gosh, goodbye Goose Mother. Holy heck, that's terrifying. If that had been a 5-5, five five, I don't know what I would have known. Actually, I could have flickered it to make it a 2-2. Two -two. No! <laughs> that card is so good! My turn. Jeez. I'm going to make a Wicked Roll token attached to this guy, I think. Actually. I'm going to make a treasure, and then I'm going to flicker this guy. Actually, I'm going to loot, discard a card, and then draw a card. Hmm... Charge!
manage to save our alchemist, get our twining twins ready. We have our collector's vault. We've gotten rid of all of our extra lands. This is going well. I would have loved to like have them put a couple counters on the oof and then the toadstool admirer, but this card's insane. We're gonna have to be careful to not let them just draw like 10 cards. Scream Puff. Just gonna play this for now. And then we'll loot away this island. We might just chump block Scream Puff. Scream Puff is kind of hard for us to deal with. Actually, I'm just going to take it. We already can't race them. We're going to have to deal with everything they do, pretty much. Yep. Okay. We got a lot of use out of that, though. It pretty much saved the game for us. Okay, they're out of cards. Send in for four. Unless they draw a land, they can't simultaneously redeploy the screen puff and tap my twining twins, which I'm mildly counting on. But if they tap my twining twins, I'll be able to double block something. That is setting up for next turn. Sure. That's a card. Go to combat. I wish I had artifact destruction, but I don't. to grab myself a cut in. Then I'm going to play my island. And if they try to redeploy Scream, Scream Puff, I will misleading notes it. Oh, that's what they're going to do. Okay. I understand. That is definitely a good use for those foods.
It does make the odds of me being able to race them higher, though. If they play Screen Puff, I'm totally going to get to Misleading Mozart, and it's going to be glorious. And then I'll be able to kill their Sweet Tooth Witch and start descending. If they'd remembered to put their counter on their Toadstool Admirer that one turn, this game would have been lost a long time ago, I think. Huh. We're going to make them spend their mana now. They will get another food this way. But I will live at one. They didn't sack their last food. That's good for me. I will put the counter onto the Tome Seeker. Sends me to five. They're going to tap my twins. And then I can send with almost everyone except the scoundrel. Hmm, they let me attack with twins. That means they're going to tap whoever I leave back. So they can hit me for two, play this thing, sack one, I go to one. And this can deal one to them. Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. We're still in this. The witch. Yep. I'm in a precarious life total. But they're honestly in a precarious spot too. Oh, what a rip. Um, hmm. So if I bounce the witch, they drain me for two. They can't drain me for two if they're going to tap Twining Twins. This game is coming down to the wire. It's going to come down to if I draw another spell next turn, I think. Because for all looking familiar, you should be able to kill them next turn. It has to be an instant or sorcery, though. If I draw my, like, random enchantments that draw me three, it's not going to go well for me. Sweet Tooth Witch. Yep. OK. 
Because now they can just drain me out naturally. Oh, what a rip. So if they tap the Twining Twins, they can't also use a food. So they actually have the win on board, but we'll have to see if they see it. Okay, so what they needed to do there is tap my Otter. Let me attack them down to with these. Then they have two mana available to sack a food, so they can go up to eight. Then I attack with everything, these with uh, like these two. They go down to one. Next turn, they untap, tap my guy, swing for the win. Unless they have something else that I don't know about here. But they had they had me kind of dead to rights here. Gosh. This was a close game. Interesting spot there. It's it's so conventional to tap the Twining Twins, but because and also to think about the foods as damage, but the foods can gain her three life. So if um, if it, it just goes the other way, oh my gosh, there's another Sweet Tooth Witch. Oh my gosh. Wait, it crashed? No. Okay, I'm back. So she has some foods. My game crashed, so I apologize to my opponent there. Looks like we've got... Yeah, this is what they needed to do last time. They live at one here. They trade with my alchemist. Oh, they're tapped out. Yep, I was not slow playing. My game crashed. Got the win in round one. Whew. See you folks in the next round, I guess. Well, let's just double check to make sure everything is smooth. Okay, I did hit the record button again. Okay. That was that was a, a worrisome moment for me. I was like, oh my gosh, my game crashed. No, right after this epic win. But yeah, we got there. I was considering, I, I didn't know how much mana they had because I was like, not sure how the game was going. And so I was like, oh, I can kill my own creature to put a young, a young hero emblem onto my 1-3, my aquatic guy, to swing for an extra damage to get him for eight. But it looks like they sacked the food to deal two to me. Um... That was a wild game. We were just like fighting against those Sweet Tooth Witches. Sweet Tooth Witch with a bunch of food in play is a pretty scary card, honestly. Like, not someone you want to run into in a, in a dark alley, you might say. Also, the Otter there was super clutch as another flying threat. That was awesome. And we, drew, we did draw spells down the stretch, which we really needed. Though, to be fair, we had drawn a bunch of lands before that. Though, to be fair, they also needed to draw like one land at one point in that game to like make the game like put away. That was a close one. That's kind of the reason my magic's fun to actually play the games instead of just like build decks and theory craft because like with perfect play, I think I would have lost that game because like if the if the one one guy, the ward dude had been like a three three had been a three three in that game, I wouldn't have been able to block it or hold it back. So if, like that one turn where, oh, it's a rematch. <laughs> oh, that's how the early access event goes sometimes. The classic rematch. Well, we know about their deck. They know about ours. We've got a killer hand, though. <laughs> this hand is amazing. Okay, we will play our mountain to hold up Torch the Tower. But we want to save Torch the Tower for the Sweet Tooth person. The Sweet Tooth Witch, I think. Prophetic Prism, that's a good card. Uh, 
I don't think I care that much about getting a 1-3 uh, down right now. I'm just going to try to find a, another spell. Because last game was very grindy. It's kind of fun to play a game too. Oh, beautiful. There's the... There's that spell we were hoping for. Get our Picklock Prankster down. They can kill it with their 3 mana, get rid of a 3 drop thing. We don't really care. We got a 2 for 1 out of it. Oh, I think they have, but they didn't want to use it yet. They're going to try to get me. And she's missing land drops. Maybe. No! <laughs> this card always gets me. Uh, that card's pretty solid. Everyone plays two drops. But if one person's missing land drops, the other person really can get ahead just by hitting land drops. So I don't have to do much to get ahead here. And how many one toughness things did I see? I mean, only the oof. Combined with the fact that I'm fairly certain that... And also the fact that I know she has a 5 toughness creature that I'm going to want to kill later with uh, the Scream Puff. I kind of want to save the Familiar to get like the extra damage so I can take down a 5 toughness card. I could have played the Tome Seeker. But like when I'm pretty sure she has that one card, I can just keep making my land drops. And uh, I think our deck can play the, the draw go game. Last game at this point, we were under some pretty serious pressure. And if I think she has the three mana kill spell, I might as well not give her something to spend her turn doing. Greta! Sure. I could just take it down. It's not as good with the... Uh scenario and it will let them use their stuff but now they have enough mana that they're probably going to be deploying spells and i could always use this to buy back one of my other spells later once i have the young hero token on something oh beautiful because now she's not just like holding up three mana to use her thing so she'll actually have to use her turn if she wants to i could have maybe done that the opposite order looted and then played this thing with the treasure yeah, that would have been better. That would have been better. I don't really mind missing the land drop, though. Like, if she plays Scream Puff here... It's going to be a little bit awkward for me. Uh, that card's awkward, too. A uh, nice two for one there. And she kills my guy. Yep. Yep, yep. Hmm. That was a pretty good turn of events. Hatching plans carrying me.
That's a fine attack, because trading a 2 2 for a 3 2 is good for them. They might use a kill spell on the Tome Seeker now. They honestly might use a kill spell on their own guy. Just to get a. Uh, stop me from getting a 3 4 flyer. Nope. Okay. <sighs> After the dust settles. This thing kind of wrecked me. I didn't get to loot away one of my lands. But it's okay. I have plenty of hard draw to make my way up. The oof is definitely annoying. Maybe I shouldn't play this out. The artifact out when I know they have the oof. Gosh, that card's annoying. That card's so good. It's just Icy Manipulator, but better. The legendary downside is not a thing in Limited. <laughs> it can even turn into a like Divination or better in the later game. And my deck isn't that threat dense. So basically what I'm thinking here is if they play another creature, I just really want to get cut in onto something. That's a good one. What can I get back? Nothing at the moment, but I'll be able to get back cut in or stop gap or something later. It's funny because the fact that you can sacrifice this almost makes it worse because it's almost never worth sacrificing. <laughs> Yep. I'm going to see if I can get them to sacrifice that thing. They can sack it to draw a card and stop me from drawing a card. But I would be happy if that was the case. Buy this back. Get my alchemist into play. Okay. This is a interesting game. I feel like I'm vastly ahead because as soon as they play a creature, my cards just get so much better. Um, cause I can just kill most of the stuff, but they know I have removal, so they don't want to play creatures. Okay. This is pretty easy. I'm not going to use a cut in on this. I'll just bounce it. Pretty much kills it. Gosh. The Alchemist plus Johan stopgap combo. Just getting them. Finally! First blood has been claimed! At long last, after all these years. Yeah, we'll get back stopgap. This is a pretty devastating thing to do to someone. They know all the cards in my hand, pretty much. They know I have removal, bounce spell, kill spell for something small. Oh my gosh. They're never going to get this third trigger on Welcome to Sweet Dude, I'll tell you that much. Oh man. I think we're going to win this one, <laughs> but it's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of slow damage. <laughs> they know half of my hand and that half of my hand is pretty good. Slowly but surely, the damage will slowly come. <laughs> this card is so absurd. <laughs> Oh, this is perfect for me. Okay.
This just lets me hit them for like twice as much damage. Billions of damage coming through. That's surprising that they did it that way. I mean, because I knew I had that card. It means they must be trying to set something up. Or they're just like, what am I supposed to do here? They're trying to get their Welcome to Sweet Tooth to go. But they knew I had the one mana deal to, and they sure as heck knew I was going to use it. If they sat Crown of Winter to draw three cards, I still think I'm ahead in that scenario. <laughs> where it's like, oh my gosh. Like, because that card is so hard for my deck to beat. I don't have an oof running around. The Goose Mother. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna just double cut in that. Is that lethal? I think it is. 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. Got the win. The young heroes! Aquatic alchemists! <laughs> I was just... Oh my god. Yes! Oh man. That was satisfying. Well, see you folks next round. Welcome to another round. Those who are observant may notice I am in a completely different location filming this. But never fear, we shall still win. This hand is great, by the way. Two hatching plans, two bargain spells. We have so much card draw. This is going to be great. We have two more matches with this deck to see how it performs. And I'm feeling confident that we're going to be 4-0 after this one. They mulliganed. We are going to be so far ahead on cards. Definitely start with the, tor with the red so we can play Torch if we need to. Ah, uh, that is a card that I will Torch. Just easy to get it down before they can get any developments. I just don't want them to draw any cards. Here, I think I will lead with Hatching Plans. If I draw a land, I can use this to get back the Torch. Otherwise, I can play this to get a treasure or something. Hopeful Vigil. Sure. Kind of like all my cards. I think I'm just going to play this as a 1-3. Make a blocker. Buy myself some time. I could play this as a 2-2 two, two to trade. It's going to accomplish a similar thing. I basically just have to wait until I draw some lands. Oh, perfect. I'll be able to block. Just what the doctor ordered. Never mind, I will never be able to block. Blocking is for suckers, clearly. But they have one card left, and they have two power in play, so I think I'm in good shape. Yep. So I play this. It's going to put me slightly too far on cards. So I think I'll wait until I can do it next turn. I'm going to create a Wicked Roll to can attach to this guy, so he can trade with the 2-2. Two -two. The next turn I can play this, get back the Torch the Tower, draw three cards, hit a land drop, play Torch on this guy maybe. The Reindeer, okay. Well, I want to cut in that now. But I'll be patient. Cash with Bargain, sack this thing. Draw three, get the spray thing. 
They can tap a guy if they want. I have this to kill it next turn. I'm at 18. They have two cards. I feel like I can't lose. Barring some absurd bomb. This reindeer is kind of scary if they have more cards in hand. That's why I killed their card draw guy. What an enchantment. Yes, yeah, so they would have drawn a card on turn two, so I'm glad I killed it instantly. My deck is awesome. My gosh, hatching plans is sick. And with so many cards in hand, I'm very t I probably will just torch something here, like I'll torch the knight. Okay. Let's see what they target. They'll tap one thing, target another thing. And I'm just going to kill this 2 too. And I'll bargain it so I can scry. So this thing is targeting that guy, this thing is targeting that guy. So I'll bargain the token. Might as well, so I can get a scry off. Do I want moats? Probably. Better than an average draw, I'd say. They scry to the top. Makes me happy I kept moats. Okay. Kill that guy. Young hero there. Get an attack in. Play land. Pass turn. We're in great shape here. We can get another attack in with this guy. And then sacrifice the young hero token. Oh, my guy is gone forever. Luckily, they can't recast it quite yet. That's unfortunate. I will play my land. I will attack. Play this one. Cast with bargain. Sack that token. Get torch the tower. Play torch the tower on this guy. Play a 1-3 to block their 1-1. One, one. This thing will exile this guy. I'm still way ahead on cards. Hatching plans will come down soon, so I can be ready for future Tome Seekers. This guy's doing some work. They can give a plus 3, plus 3, which is kind of scary. But if they do that, I'll get to take him out. This thing, they have one, two, three, four enchantments. So this thing can get plus five, plus five. So here they're going to give their guy plus two, plus two, I think. Oh, they give that guy plus two, plus two. Wow, they have a whole combo engine going here. I'm now slightly worried. I thought I couldn't lose this game, and then they just did this a couple times, and now I'm like, oh gosh. Well, that's pretty dang good. They can just exile it, though, if I wait and...
I'll buff this guy. Send him in. I'm pretty happy making trades still. I just want my 4 4 to win me the game. They have one, two, three, four. This guy's been doing so much work. Maybe I should have killed him. My gosh, this card is crushing me. Okay, well that's going to be really good for me. We'll draw off quite a few cards here. We'll get rid of their guy once and for all. They might scry on upkeep or something. Wow, that's good for me. This card was really good. Princess takes flight. That's such a crazy combo, just bouncing it over and over. This game was way closer than I thought it would be. They did cry something to the top. I want to keep some lands in case I draw my looter card. But I think two is more than enough. And I get my card... I will pay one. And I'll put it on him, so now almost all my creatures are lethal. He's lethal if I draw an instant or sorcery. Got my flyer. Wow. I think they're still dead. They go to seven and they die. Yeah, because all my creatures are lethal. Okay. It wouldn't have technically been lethal because they could have blocked this guy. Taken six. But now it is. Get Johan stopgap. Trigger, trigger. Send in the goons. Good game. 4 0. Let's see if we can get that last win. Man. Our deck is sweet. Our deck is sweet. I'm really liking this format. It feels like there's a lot of decisions to be made. The game doesn't end instantly. Hmm. We have our little otter guy. Borno. Let's go for the perfect record, shall we? One more round. As I said beforehand, five rounds is a good amount to get a feeler for how the deck plays. And we have a great opener. I'll play this guy as a 2-drop, then use this as a combat trick to give it plus 2, plus 0. This card's really useful in the late game for triggering other alchemists. It's basically a free attack. Well, that's pretty nice. Frolicking Familiar works out again. To the surprise of no one. We all know this card is incredible. I'm so glad they made a card with such good art. Actually good. Um...
This card's not really a problem for me. Wow. I'll take Johans. I think Johans is just better. Even though I already have one. So they think they're on the defensive, which means they probably have a late game here. That I might need to be worried about. They're trading their guys off like there's no tomorrow. Gosh, I wish I could have just cut in that guy. That would have been perfect. As it is, I'm embarrassed with my three lands. If I lose just to put the three land hand, that's fine, though. That happens. But, like, if I draw a land there, I'm hitting them for... This will get be a 4-4, four, four essentially, so I hit them for 12, down to 12. I just need to draw one land, and this game comes back onto my side, I think. Because Cut-In is such a good lineup for this. No, it's a 5-5 five, five now. But now I can just bounce it. Gosh, I just need to draw a land. They know I have the bounce spell. Gosh, this is so, so pathetic. Okay, I accept it. I'm going to go down some life points here. But I'll hopefully be able to deploy some blockers. Gosh, this has just been super unlucky. I don't have to jump yet. I'll be at 10. Man, what a greedy play. Just putting a monster counter on this. They know I have the bounce spell. They must have like some way to give it hexproof or something. Okay, they play that guy. I feel like they might have the one mana give a thing hexproof. It's the only thing that makes sense. We're going to hope they don't have it, though. If they have it, they have it. They don't have it. I will discard the Tome Seeker and one land. Okay. So now that thing has haste. That's not good. Gosh darn it. I'm gonna lose. Yep. This game was so winnable if I just hit my fourth land on time. It's so sad. Yeah, there's nothing I could have done here differently. Yep, I don't have the mana to simultaneously kill this thing and bounce their fang guy. Good game, opponent. You got me. Even if I bounce that thing, it won't matter. Gosh, if I had one more life point, I might have a chance here, because this guy could totally race them, potentially. I'd hit him for four down to seven, then the next turn I'd be able to maybe combo off. Oh, that's so brutal. I guess I should have played around them having another one of these guys, and not attacked with my 1-3 to get it eaten. Jeez. Yeah, that's probably my bad. 
Yep, I wasn't beating that card either. Oh, that's such a frustrating loss. I was one land away from just completely destroying them. Like, if I untap, deal four to this thing, put a counter on my guy, they just can't possibly win that game ever in a million years. But I just drew too many spells and not enough lands. It happens. That's how it goes sometimes. Four and one, not a bad record, especially when that's the only game you lose is to not hitting your fourth land. But this was the deck. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did make it all the way till the end, in the comment section down below, leave hashtag super change because I must imagine that the difference between where I was in game three and game four was pretty wild. Or leave hashtag uh, the hero because Frolicking Familiar was the hero for us. Actually, honestly, Alchemist was the hero. Or I don't know. Just uh, either one of those is a good one to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video. And uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Let's see what we learned about some of these cards. I mean, the hatching plans were fantastic. The alchemists were fantastic in the late game and early game. Collector's Vault was pretty good. Saved us a couple games. Uh, Scoundrel was pretty reasonable. Prankster was okay. I loved Torch the Tower. Loved Cut In. This guy was great. This card was great. We never got to draw the, mis the uh, Asinine Antics. Mildly unfortunate. That could have maybe saved us in that last game. Turned both their guys into 1-1s. One but... Um, Twining Twins was fantastic. That card being, it was insane as a ward guy. And then, uh, Obiras did some value. I love Frolicking Familiar, though. Just absolute mascot. Living the dream. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comments. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. Uh, and yeah, have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you next time.